Hi, my name is Derek Humphreys and I'm Developer Engagement Lead here at MasterCard. So this video is part of a series of videos around our Open Banking API. And there's a video already uh, ahead of this, it should be linked in the description, that shows you how to actually get configured and set up with the API, how to set up your uh, sandbox credentials, how to authenticate against the API, how to send test transactions. So all of that will already have been done before you get to this video. This video is going to jump straight in and you can see Postman already open in, uh, in front of me. And we're going to talk about a particular use case that's very prevalent around Open Banking, which is called account opening so we're not just talking about bank accounts here uh, we're thinking about any kind of account opening process that you might want to go through where you want to be able to identify a user is who they say they are and in many cases you want to be able to move funds into the account they've just opened so an example could be an application you've written let's say around supporting pharmacies or managing prescriptions and you want to be able to open an account for a user so that a you can identify who they are you want their address so you can actually send information to them. But you also want to be able to move funds into the account maybe to pay for prescriptions and maybe on a regular basis do a top up once it gets too low. So I'm going to show you how to do that through some of the endpoints available here on the uh, Open, API, Open Banking uh, API. So we already have set up a customer ID, a customer in a previous uh, video. And we also, uh, so I'm going to go into a customer and I'm going to get a list of all the accounts that customer has. So, okay, customer accounts. As you can see, the customer IDs can be pulled in for a variable. And this customer has already gone into their bank account or gone into the flow. They've authenticated with their bank. They've selected the one or more accounts they want to give us access to. We've got our token, so we can actually now use that token to access their bank accounts on their behalf to pull information back. So there's three accounts that have been registered. There is the uh, credit card account, there is the savings account, and there is the checking account. So I'm going to use the savings account this time. And I'm going to go into the test drive and I'm going to go account ID. Let's replace the account identifier there with our savings account. And so the next step then is we want to make sure that user is who they say they are as part of the KYC uh, platform. So if I'm going to set up an account, I want to be able to piggyback the credentials that the bank has already verified uh, when they set up the account for the user in the first place. So they've gone through a whole process of scanning utility bills, checking photo identification, sending emails to, ident to validate email addresses and phone numbers. So all the information they have on file for that user, for that account, can be held to be accurate. So we're going to use that by calling uh, get account owner for this account. So the account ID that we've set up back here, and for the customer ID, we're going to get their details. And here we have got John Doe and their address. So when we set up our accounts, let's say again for this pharmacy account opening, we want to be able to maybe post prescriptions to the correct person, the correct address. We can use and be confident this address actually is the correct address for John Doe because the bank has validated all that for us. Once we have the details for setting up the account, one of the main things you want to do is be able to fund the accounts. You want to make sure the customer has enough money in their accounts to be able to uh, fund it. So there's two uh, balances, for two uh, ways you can call that. There's a get uh, available balance live. So it actually will, at that moment in time, go out to their bank account and pull the latest balance for that user. Or you can get the cached one, which would have been the last one that was cached. So we're gonna try the live one. Uh, so they're looking for a saving account ID. So we'll just set that up here, just for clarity. Saving account variable but it is this account. I could just as easily have switched that over to using the account ID, but I just for simplicity's sake, I'll keep these separate for future uh, videos. So we're gonna call it for this saving account ID, and we're gonna hit send. So what this should do is go back out and return the balance. So it's giving me the available balance is 1,104 US dollars on our savings account for this user. So we feel they've got sufficient funds to be able to actually do a transaction. So we want to move the money from this savings account into the account that we've just set up for this user. And one of the things we need to do then is we need to actually the ACH details. We need to understand what are the account number and the routing number for that bank account so that we can execute a uh, ACH transfer. So again, it's going to make a transaction. It's going to use the customer ID the saving account ID, and it's going to give us back the ACH details. Hit send. 
and there we are there's the real account number obviously this is a sandbox and this is the real routing number and we can use those two pieces of information to actually feed into an api to actually execute an ach transfer uh, uh, and get the funds into the account that we just opened so I hope that was useful. It just gives you a quick insight into another one of the use cases around the Open Banking API and how easy they are to use and execute. There are other videos in this series from the start of how to set up everything and integrate and set up your Postman collection. Through to following videos, I'll actually show you how to uh, do this in Python as well as Java. So I thank you again for your time. Goodbye.